to work and, and help you do some stuff on social media and all that kind of good stuff. So again, we're not going to teach you the creative uh, background to make you a, a Picasso, but we will help you out. But I think part of it is you'll be able to do some things on your own, but if you have somebody working with you, maybe there's a teenager on staff that's doing some of these things, you'll at least be able to understand the language a little better and maybe be able to provide a little a little guidance. So th that's kind of our, our place here. First thing I wanted just to start talking about um, briefly is the importance of photography and images for websites. Uh, you cannot have enough of them. Uh, I would say probably 95% of the clients we work with do not have enough quality images. And part of it is people just really don't know how to get them. Uh, I've shared several times before um, an article that I wrote um, just to help people uh, identify ways to get some images. Now I will tell you at the end of our seminar today, uh, we will provide you a link to a web page that will give you links to these pages that we're referring to. So all this information will be out there for you. All right, so you don't have to worry about trying to copy down uh, domain names and things. We'll give you these links. But this is something that I wrote for Parks and Attractions getting, getting some pictures. So you know, we'll send you a link to this article, take a look at it. You know, you don't need to have a professional photographer come out to get great photos for you. But there are some things now with your smartphone that can take amazing pictures. Uh, but you do need to take some uh, plans when you do it. And again, you can see five keys here to doing it. But you can have great photos. So start by having something, a pool of photos to work from before you start editing really bad pictures from the get-go. Go out and get some some great photography to work. Now, if you're in uh, uh, an industrial setting or a retail setting, this still holds true. Again, this article was about parks and attractions, but wherever you are, wherever you work, you want to have nice photos. And um, sometimes photographers that don't quote unquote get it don't always get you great photos either. So um, you know, take some time, have a plan, and you can have some, some nice photos. What are the benefits when you have photos? Well, there, there's a lot of them. Uh, one of the things is from a, a website design or a digital marketing design is we could do a lot more stuff uh, in terms of making your website pop and catching attention. Now, some of these you're going to see here are graphics as well. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But, you know, a lot of the photography you're, uh, photography you're going to see in the background here weren't pictures that they just ran out and grabbed a snapshot of. They set them up. They told people big smiles. They probably did the same thing 10 times over to get a nice photo. So, again, whether someone's operating machinery in a factory or playing mini golf at your park, get people to take pictures the way you want, and then you can go about making them better. So uh, it will benefit you tremendously for brochures, print, radio, not radio, but TV, anything like that, we're going to have images that's going to help. So make sure you take a point to do that. What people don't understand once they have their photography or images is there seems to be a lot of confusion about size of images, whether we're talking about the actual physical space that that picture fills up, like how big is it in dimensions versus how big is it in terms of a file size. You know, and some of us that are older, you know, when we talked about the size of a picture, it was the, you know, you hold it in your hands and it's a, a four by five or here's how big the picture is. Now, in a more digital world, uh, a size of, a, of, a top of an image can be a couple different things, um, but part of it can be how big the file is and how dense the pixels are. So to just give you a, just a real brief perspective on that, this is just a page I pulled up just to give you an idea of this digital picture here is actually made up of small dots, are actually small squares of data, each one representing a slightly different color. The more pixels there are, the more crisp that picture is going to appear. But each one of those little squares is a piece of data, is a piece of information. So the more pixels that are crammed into that picture, the bigger the file is. And so what we'll see sometimes are uh, some clients that have a great camera and they take all these pictures and they're super high resolution. All right, now the web only goes so far, which we'll talk about in a second here, but they'll take this photo that is just a super high resolution photo, which you really can't benefit from on the web. They'll put it on their website, and now their website starts to slow down because it's trying to pull all this data of this huge picture, which is really unnecessary. And again, people don't know how to, we are going to show you today, how to resize a picture in terms of file size so it keeps your website running optimally and still presenting very well, all right? So just as a, as a side note, typically on the web, pictures are going to be 72 DPI. D 
DPI stands for dots per inch, all right? So in this area here. If you try to print out something, which some of you, I'm sure most of us have, you try and print out something from the web, it doesn't come out crystal clear because it's only 72 DPI. And again, for the web, it works just fine and the pictures look fantastic. If you have a great picture that you used in your brochure, all right, and this is where people sometimes get messed up, they got this picture for a print, print is typically 300 dots per inch or 300 DPI. All right. So people will take those 300 DPI beautiful print pictures and try and put them in their website. Way too big, slows down the website, creates all kinds of problems. So depending on how you work with uh, your images, uh, you, you just want to be aware of that. One of the things I wanted to talk about is, you know, it's much easier for you to do what's called down sampling, which is you take a big picture, a big picture, again, meaning data size, file size, and you make it smaller. So you take a picture that you use for print and use it on the web. What doesn't work as well is when you take a picture that was say 72 DPI, all right, it's a, it's a smaller file, a lower resolution photo, which looks beautiful on the web, and then you try and pull it off the web and use it to print, well, guess what? It's not gonna look very good. It's gonna be very pixelated and uh, not come across looking the way you want to. So downsampling is, is pretty good. Upsampling is taking a bad picture and trying to make it higher resolution. That's bad. That doesn't usually work as well. All right. And again, you know, our expectation isn't that you're going to become experts in this. I just want you when you're on your websites or working on social media, just to stop and be able to ponder these things and just stop and think for a second. And again, we'll give you this this uh, presentation as a as a resource for you as well. What we typically see happening in terms of errors. Uh, we'll take a look here at our uh, Mega Blast website. This is our demo website that we use uh, basically just to show different functionality and things we can do with websites. So this is just a, a sample. But if we look here, we made a page for imagery sizing. So this is our team right here. Um, I think I probably know many of you, but this is me and this is Kumi right here and the rest of our team. This photo is set up to be sized and scaled and as far as dots per inch, it is designed to display on the web properly. And hopefully that comes across, you guys can see that. And we, when we give people websites, when we give them the finished product, everything looks this way, all right? It's scaled correctly, it looks nice. We go back after a year and Good intention people are in these websites trying to work on some things and make them look good. And we often find websites, and I know you guys have seen all this stuff too. You see these images with people that are all stretched and pulled real tall and skinny. Some people that are squished where the whole line is, you know, munchkined out and shortened up. Or like in here, everybody's all pixelated and blurry. Now the picture's not clear. It doesn't look good. And over time, you keep adding these pictures, and then you add some that are files that are too big, all of a sudden this website that looked great now doesn't look very good. And so what our goal is today is to help you. And again, of course, if you're like, Scott, that was great, but we still don't know how to do it. We'll obviously help you with these things. And, you know, we're always here to, to provide that support and do some of that work for you. But if you want to do some of these things on your own, you certainly get a better start by uh, going with what we're doing today. So I, I wanted to turn it over to Kumi because part of, of um, working with images is understanding how to find what size images you're actually using and what size images you need. Now, again, there's different ways to consider this. There's there's image size, which is kind of the physical size, which we'll talk about in, in how many pixels it is, uh, height and width. There's also image resolution, which we talked about, you know, typically print uh, 300 DPI or web 72 DPI. And then the file size, how much data is packed into that picture. And again, just having a basic understanding that will will help you. So I'll turn it over to Kumi just for a couple minutes here to kind of go over identifying uh, image sizes and how you can kind of do some of that research on your own. So you'll start with a good base of knowledge. Okay. Kumi. Okay. So um, pretty much anything on the web or the internet, you are able to find um, the image size. Uh, so if we take a look at this image, um, Google Chrome, which is what we're looking at right now, uh, is nice because you can open up an image in a new tab. You can, you can actually see like the actual image here, and it'll actually tell you the actual size of the image. Um, so when we're talking about image size, we're talking about the actual physical dimensions of the image. Um, and in the digital world, that's not really like inches or centimeters. It's more um, measured in 
what Scott was talking about, like pixels. So this one is actually 1300 by 575. Um, so in this case, Kumi, if you wanted to replace this image here and you wanted it to fit exactly in that space, what you're going to want to do is replace it with a picture of that dimensions, 1300 by 575, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, and like you could uh, insert an image that has like the same width, but you do want to be careful that like the ratio between the width and the height is the same. Um, that's that typically is what happens when images are stretched or squished is that the, um, say like the width is changed, but the height is the same. So if we look at uh, this image here, you can see like this image, the height is the same as before, 575, but we made the width like 500 pixels, which is more than half the, the width that it normally is. Okay, so that's like that's why you can see that like the people are stretched and uh, the image doesn't quite look right. Um, so with ratios, you want to make sure that if you change the width of the image, that you also change the ratio to uh, the same kind of ratio. And we're gonna get we're gonna show people some tools to help them do that. Right. To help to, so they don't make that mistake. Yeah. So throughout your website, if you know like the size of your image, what what it needs to be, which is great for like your image rotator. Again, in Google Chrome, you can open it and find it that way. Yeah. So we're um, doing we're we're using Google Chrome as our browser on the internet, but right here, Kumi just drag Internet Explorer here, which again presents it a little differently. So and it's not again you have to remember just know that different. Uh, you, if you're using different browsers, you might see different things. So Kumi's going to show you what what it looks like on Internet Explorer. Yeah, on Internet Explorer, again, you can right click and their uh, Internet Explorer has properties, Firefox also has properties, but you can see the dimensions here. Um, this one uh, is a little scaled down just because of the responsive view, but you can see um, what we're looking at is 910 by 403. Okay, um, and then if you also save the image to your um, computer, save picture as, and we do that. You can also get the properties, or if you already have an image on your computer, you can get the properties this way as well. If we just uh, grab that. So again, like if you are looking on your computer for the image, you can right click and you can go to properties there to see um, the details. So you just you just literally just saved this picture right now. You just grabbed it on the web, right clicked it, saved it, and now you're looking at it yep. on your computer. Yep. And so you can see these dimensions for ones that you download from the internet or you know ones that your design team gives you, or if you're if you're doing the um, marketing design work, then. Uh, this is how you would find the dimensions. Now, before there. you click off of that, Kumi, just to make a point of something we're going to talk about in a second. The other thing here is when I talked about the data, how big the file is. This, this where it references size here, and I guess that's probably better terminology of dimensions versus size. And this is the size of the file, how big it is. And we've obviously resized, well, maybe not obviously, but we have resized pictures for use on the web. But uh, this will be a number that we'll refer to again. But since it was here, I thought I'd point it out. Right. So what you're looking at here is actually really, it, it is too large typically. Um, best practices, it is um, good to go with a image that's 100 kilobytes or, or smaller. Um, and, uh, and we'll go through a couple of ways that you can um, make the image a little smaller here. So um, whether you want to resize the image to make it a little smaller in dimensions, um, for the ratio wise, or if you need, you know, like um, a thumbnail size of like 150 by 150, or if you want to use this image for like Facebook or something and you need to crop it. Um, there's a lot of great tools out there that you can Google. If you uh, just Google like image resizer, then Google comes up with a bunch of free different options that you can choose here, right? Um, a resource that that we found useful that you guys are more than welcome to use um, is crop.me and this allows you to upload an image and then resize and crop an image if you need to. 
So, so we're going to show you a couple free online resources here today. Uh, and like Kumi just showed you, there's tons of them online. So we're not saying this is the absolute best one. This is just an example of one. Um, Kumi actually just grabbed uh, an image that we had on our desktop of uh, a miniature golf uh, course with a green golf ball there, um, just as a, a demo. So we'll give you links to these, but we're not saying these are the absolute best tools. We're just giving you an example of some tools that are out there. So go ahead. Right. So this is the image here. It's pretty large. It's uh, 1100 by 733, and it's about 900 kilobytes. So it's it's a pretty large image that you probably don't want to just put directly onto your uh, website because it can, uh, it like Scott said, can um, bog your site down as far as load time. So what we want to do is we want to crop it, whether it's for like your image rotator where it needs to be a certain size, or if it's like a thumbnail. Like if you want to create like graphical buttons or something like that, um, Crop Me allows you to you know set uh, select a particular size that's already set, or you can define your custom size here. Um, so for example purposes, if we choose like 250 by 150, which is obviously not the same ratio as the full image itself, when we go to crop your image in Crop Me. It will allow us to um, edit what what we would like to use um, as the image. Yeah. So if the space we have is only was it 150 by 250. Mm -hmm. If that's the, the space, that, the allotted space that we have for a picture, um, this is going to say, okay, it's going to draw that little box and then say, okay, you know, you got to move it within here, but here's the image that you can have. So it's going to fit the space that you have available. Right. And if you resize it, we'll go ahead and show it. Yeah, so this box here will automatically do 250 by 150, but it keeps the ratio. So if you want to, you know, focus on a particular element in your image or, uh, you know, change your thumbnail so that it's focused on one focal point, you can resize this little window here. And you'll notice that the when you change the width, the height actually also changes. And that's what we were talking about, like ratio. You want it to be the same ratio, so that way it's, it'll still be 250 by 150 um, after we select the uh, part of the image we want to focus on. Okay, so if I change this and we want to focus in on this golf ball here, we can apply. And now when we go to download um, the crops, uh, what we'll get is a 250 by 150 focusing on just that little uh, golf ball. Okay. And again, we can right click, we can click properties, and we can see um, the actual size. You can see, um, like, there's a few things that um, factor into the file, the actual file size uh, when you're saving an image, and that is the um, the actual dimensions as well as what Scott was saying for the um, DPIs or the resolution. Um, for the web, you will only need 72 DPIs, and um, and your actual dimensions will depend on like the image that you want to put on your website. Um, but once you have that image or the graphic, you can also do um, something that we'll show you here to compress the size so that it, it can be a little smaller. So the file itself will be smaller, take up less space on your website, and help your website load faster, which again provides many, many benefits. So this is something that when we build uh, you know, your website for you, we'll, we will compress these. But if you add photos, you can do the same compression. It's, as you'll see, it's a piece of cake and very valuable, particularly loading pictures to your website. Right. Uh, so Still open. Bottom. Oh. Okay. All right. So, um, what? What you can do to make uh, your file size smaller but keep your um, dimensions the same and the quality of your image the same is you can go to um, tinypng.com. What this site does is compresses the file size so that it is um, smaller so that your images can load faster on your website. Um, so even if you want to use like the original image here, this large one, um, what you can do is just drag 
and move it here and you can watch it. Or the original file is like 960 kilobytes and we now reduced it to 125 kilobytes. You can see that is drastically smaller and um, if we download this image and we open it, you'll see that it is virtually identical. Like you probably can't even see um, the difference here, but you can, but it is a smaller file and so it will load faster than the original one. And again, we're talking about using images for the web. So if you're doing print, you don't want to do any of this because you can make the files as big as you want because you want to print. But on the web, it's a different world. And um, this is, again, this is a very simple, very valuable piece of information if you're adding uh, images to your website. All right. Okay. So with that being said, you know, we're, to this point, we've kind of talked about adding uh, images for your website, but you also want to be able to add images and graphics to your social media. As we all know, social media has become very visual and images and graphics get a lot more engagement than uh, posts and things without. So one of the things that's important for you to know, and again, hopefully you can start connecting the dots with us, is how big should images be on various social media channels that we use? Now, if you simply search uh, social media sizes cheat sheet for 2015, you'll get a whole bunch of examples, all right? This is one, and we'll give you the link to it, but there's a ton out there. But in this instance here, if you want to see the cheat sheet, this is uh, uh, Twitter with appropriate pictures. And I'll get back to these again. So, you know, here's Facebook with appropriate dimensions, Google+. Plus. All right, um, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, all right? So if you go through all these, you're going to want to create images that look good. Now, I don't know how many, I know you guys have seen this, I see it all the time. You go onto somebody's Facebook page, and I'm sure some of you online here are probably the same case. And this is your, your Facebook page, this is your cover photo, and here's your profile picture. And in the profile picture, your logo is either hanging off the sides, or it's all squished, or you can only see part of it. And, and again, that's all partly because of people not knowing how to resize, crop their images and things like that. So hopefully, you know, some of those tools with Crop Me uh, can, can help you facilitate some of that. Um, so this is a great cheat sheet, and anytime you're making uh, images for uh, your social media, it's a good idea to take a look at these sizes, just so you can fill up as much screen space as you can and make them look as good as possible. Because filling up your social media with really bad graphics and images isn't great either. So take a little bit of time and grab something like this as a cheat sheet. But the other thing that you can do is maybe you, you have no design skills at all. And maybe you're just not very good creatively. And again, we can't fix that today. But what we can do is, is show you a way to make something maybe a little better than you could before. And just as an example, this is our would be a Facebook cover photo. All right. And again, I'm not going to go on Facebook. We've all been in there and seen that. But I've seen a lot of these that are really, really bad. And again, you can see your profile image kind of overlays it here. But it's 851 by 315. There's uh, uh, tools out there that are free or partially free that uh, give you the ability and some uh, help to create something like this. One of those, uh, again, just as an example, not necessarily something we're saying you have to use, is called Canva. It's a free account. There are some paid things to it. And they actually give you some predetermined sizes of uh, images or graphics that you can use. I always think it's best just to use custom dimensions so that way we're not worried about anything being accurate. In this case, if we're going to make a Facebook uh, cover photo, it's 851 by 315. So we're going to say use custom dimensions. It's going to load up and we I entered in here 851 by 315 pixels. All right. So I know this is the exact size that Facebook wants for my cover photo. And I say design, all right? And so what is it going to load up here? And I don't know how well you can see it as far as the screen translation, but there's a small white box in there that is exactly the dimensions that I need it to be. And all these design tools work a little bit differently. And like, again, Canva is just one. But what it'll do is it'll help you do some of the design work for you. In this case, you know, we selected kind of a two-thirds, one-third box design. And he was like, okay, we're going to add our mini golf photo here. It's going to automatically populate it uh, into that uh, one box that's there. And then maybe we say we're going to have a Father's Day special and dad's play free or something. So Kumi can go here, add text. Again, the nice thing this offers is some little text guidelines. It can give you some little stylized art that maybe you couldn't really uh, have the ability to design on your own. 
So you can just drag and drop this in here, and then you can we'll let you go in there and edit text a little bit and add some different background colors uh, or remove background colors. And while well, we don't have to change this whole thing here, but you can see you can just add some text here. But even here, you can see in 30 seconds of us doing this, um, we've created something better than mostly what we see on the web. And we are not really showing a whole heck of a lot of design skills or abilities, um, but basically just giving you a tool to uh, make some nice stuff. And again, these can be pictures you're making for Instagram, for Facebook, maybe you're designing a coupon, uh, maybe it's uh, on YouTube or Twitter. It's just very easy. And, you know, with any of these things, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, and we're, we're not even that. Kumi and I, neither one of us are, quote, unquote, designers. Um, but you can go in here and play around a little bit, and you can come up with something maybe better than uh, what you're using now. When you're all finished, all right, now in this case, just so just so we point out, because it's going to be that, if that Happy Father's Day is sitting there in your Facebook cover photo, the PP and the Happy are going to get uh, covered up by the cover photo, which is okay, because we're just pointing it out, but you'll lose a couple letters in there. There you go. So anyway, if you uh, want to save it, the other thing that's helpful for you down the road is give your images that you save and your graphics you save uh, a name that's going to help you find them again. A lot of times clients send us uh, images and the name of the image is 1752wxy.jpg. Um, you, don't, you don't know what that is. You can't find it. Name your images something that are going to help you uh, locate them going down the road and to find them. So. Again, in this case right here, you just click uh, Done, and you're going to be able to download it. And when it's all finished, it downloads that image. It's going to download it, and you're going to be ready to go into Facebook and, and upload your, your pictures there. So, um, you know, basically what we were hoping to accomplish, and again, this is a nice, quick, and we want to not to use a lot of your time, just uh, basically 30 minutes to give you some insight. We're going to give you these links to everything we talked about. But we wanted just to help you um, get a little better understanding in terms of what, uh, what some of the different terminology is, what it means, and what the impacts are, and also give you some tools to help you be able to uh, uh, utilize uh, some of these things. And, and again, be better on social media and in terms of your website. So I don't know. We're going to kind of start to wrap it up here. I didn't see any questions posed in chat. Maybe that just means they didn't work. I don't know. But uh, if I unmute everybody, does anybody have any questions about anything we cover? You can so simply type them in. Or the sign the door uh, during your party so the general public doesn't come in. Does need to keep the doors unlocked for fire code? Um, <laughs> All, right. All right. So I hear background conversations, but didn't hear any questions in there. So, you know, um, my email um, is sbrown at wddonline.com. And again, we'll put uh, Kumi's contact information and my contact information uh, in the follow-up email that we'll send to you along with links to everything that we're talking about today so you'll be able to check these things out. But, you know, the other thing I'd recommend uh, is follow us on, you know, Facebook or Twitter. And we tend to send out a lot of little tips for people, um, just how to uh, be better at social media and uh, maintain your website. So uh, we, we try and keep it kind of interesting there. So if you get a chance, to follow us again, like on Facebook or Twitter, and uh, we'll give you some good, uh, some good info there. Um, other than that, we want to thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with today. We're going to try and do some more of these. So if you have an idea or something that you would like us to talk about, let us know and we'll try and cover that and keep these, again, nice short little pockets of information that are going to uh, benefit you down the road. So on behalf of Kumi and myself, thanks again for spending some time with us and have a great afternoon and we look forward to speaking with you. Thanks a lot.